This lesson is a part of my plus two hour UiPath course. Find the entire course and the course materials in the description below. We have installed UiPath and now we are ready to create our first robot. So click lesson two, your first robot. Scroll down to the description. Here we need to open a new project and then we'll create a robot that opens Notepad, type something in and click enter. Type another thing in, then have a delay of 5 seconds, click File, click New Window, and then display a message box. Don't worry if you don't understand all this, I'll show it all to you so you can create it. So let's go to UiPath. To open up a brand new project and create automations in there, under New Project, click Process. Here we can give it a name, and since this is for our entire course, we can just say our UiPath beginners course, but feel free to give it the name you want. Under description, it says blank process. Here it can say our course workflows and choose a location. I just choose the default location, but you can definitely change that. Then click create. This is UiPath as it looks when we open up. We can first go to project down here. So we click project. Here we can see our project. The first one that is dependencies, that is packages, that is installed. We can see Excel, Mail, System and UI automation. This is default packages. If we want to install more packages, that could be if we want some PDF automation Outlook automation or anything, we go up here to manage packages, then we click all packages and we can search for just as we want, but we won't. So we click cancel. Our project here, the main workflow file is called main XAML and that's the only file with an automation in. Right now it's blank. We can see it here. If we open up main workflow, we can see that we have a blank canvas and this is where we will create our automations. Let's try to go to activities and then just drag in a sequence. A sequence is simply just a container for our automation. As best practice, we always want to give these activities that we drag in a proper name. So here we could just call it our first robot. Simply just double click or right click and then click rename. So now we have a container. We have nothing in it. We can't do anything. Let's look at the process description. So we have this nice project and let's start at the end. So we want to display a message box with a message in. Let's just copy this message over. So mark it and copy. Then go back to UiPath. Now we want to have a message box. So search for a message box up here in activities. Make sure you are on the activities tab. Don't worry, you will learn these things as we always, almost always are in the activities tab. Scroll a little bit down and find message box. Then you can click it, you can drag it in. And now we dragged it into our sequence. So our sequence was our container and this is our message box. One thing to remember is that whenever you see these warnings, something is wrong, something is missing in here. And when there's an inner warning that is in our inside activity here, then this sequence all, all also display a warning because it says that there's something wrong in this sequence. What's wrong here is that we'll need to specify a text for our message box. And remember, we copied that. So simply just here in text must be quoted Click here and then to place in a text, put a quotation mark. You'll see that it automatically put two quotation marks and then we can paste in the string. So this one here. Now you actually created your first robot, believe it or not, we can run. To run it, go up here to debug file and click run file. Again, click the drop down, click run file. This is just a robot with a message box that says our first robot is completed. Nothing special, but you build your first automation. Congratulations with that. Is this video helping you? Then please give it a thumbs up. 
that will really make me happy and improve my reach. Thank you and back to the course. Now let's build the workflow. So we go back to our process description. Here we need to open up a notepad and then we need to type something in. Let's first open up a notepad. To open up a notepad, we go to activities up here and find an open application. Don't worry, you will easily get all these activities within the next two hours. So we drag in an open application. And because we want the open application to run first, we drag it in in the start of our sequence. So the order is that we open up an application now and then we display a message box. You can see the error here again. That's fine. We will fill something in. To open up an application, we could either just click here to indicate window on screen. That is, we can tell UiPath that this is the application we want to open. But then we need to have that application open. So go down to your start menu, then find a notepad. Simply just search for it, then click it. And here we have a blank notepad. So what you do is that you click this blue here, indicate window on screen. And now you can see that the elements here, they turn yellow and we want to not open this browser, but we want to open up this notepad. So whenever this yellow border is around your notepad, simply just left click with your mouse like this. And here we open up the application. That's fine. We could also, if you go over here to properties and if this properties is not shown, it looked like this. You simply just click the properties here. So we click it and make sure that we pin it because we will use it a lot. So we could also have specified in the file name, but it's usually more easy just to open the application and have UiPath recognize it like this. The selector, that is the .NET Windows Framework address. You don't have to worry a lot about it. This just uh, notice that we have a selector here. That's it. So now we can try to run it. Usually we, when we are RPA developers, we run these workflows a lot. We see if it works. And now it's not the most complicated solution. I'll give you that, but let's try it. So click the drop down up here and then click run file. That's it. You see that we have opened up another instance of notepad. That's because we haven't closed the first one. And then the message box came up. So click OK in the message box, the robot will finish. A message box will always pause the workflow. So sometimes it's good when we want to pause the workflow to have a message box in it. Let me close down one of the notepads. So when we want to automate in notepad, we can see here that we have this open application and then we have something in it called a do. That is simply just that we, whatever activities we drag in here, it will perform in the open application. And let's see what we need to do. So we go back to the process description. So we need to type in, this is our very first robot and then click enter. And because now we know that we need the quotation marks, so let's copy them. So copy everything here and then go back to UiPath. To type something in, we simply just search for a type into like this. Then we drag it in. We need to indicate where we want to type in because we just opened the applications. Now I know that we can only type something in here, but imagine that you have an application where there will be several places to type something in a system like SAP or a Navision. Then we need to specify it. So we click here again, indicate. And here we can see that we can type in here. We could also type in here. That wouldn't make a lot of sense here. We could type in here, here. We could choose all the elements. But, but choose the blank canvas here in the notepad, click here. That's it. So now we need to type something in. And remember, we just copy that one. So paste it in with a control V like this. So here we have, this is our very first robot. And then let's just fix some things. So here we open up the application and remember I told you to always rename your activities. Right now it doesn't matter a whole lot, but it will be best practice when we develop complicated workflows. So simply just right click or double click then we can say open application, delete this and maybe just say notepad like this. Here we will have a type into and then this editable text doesn't say a whole lot. So we could 
try to delete it and then say something meaningful. Then we can say type into our first line maybe. Just make a description that you can easily interpret when you open up your robot later. We can also right click here and then we can choose annotations, add annotation. So here we make a description to make it easier for ourselves or our fellow developers. So we could say something like, this is an annotation. Usually you didn't want to make an annotation to all your activities because this is pretty trivial. We can see that we type into our first line and we can see what's going on. But with some more complicated activities, we want to give it an annotation. Again, we can try to run the robot and let's see that it actually works. So we will delete this or close it down rather and then run the robot. So again, click the drop down up here and then click run file. We open up a notepad and we see that we typed in this is our very first robot. Then our message box came up. That's fine. We click the message box. Our robot is done. Let's go to the next step in the process description. Here we want to, actually we want to click enter after this one and then we want to type in, this is still our first robot. So copy this one here, it's very simple. Go back to UiPath and then to make the enter, I'll help you here. Because if we want to hit enter, we can do it in several ways. The easiest thing to send hotkeys is to just click this plus here. You can see that we can send all sorts of hotkeys here. But we want to find the enter that is here, this this one. You could of course also have used this shortcut here, quotation marks, uh, hard brackets, K enter, but it's more easy just to click the plus. So now we have our first line and then we click enter. Then we want to type something in into the next line. So still have a type into and drag it in. Now we need to indicate it and I'll tell you why in a few seconds. So click the indicate. And now you can see we can't really find it. Sometimes this happened. We could solve that in two ways. We could first make sure that we have the notepad open and then we could do the indicate again. To get away from here, you simply just type in escape on your keyboard, we get away. So we could make sure that this is open and then we click indicate and we can see that we have it now. Another cool way that I want to show you is that click escape again. Simply just minimize the notepad. So whenever you're here, you might want to, we, al we already have clicked the indicate. Then you can click F2 on your keyboard and three seconds will go where you can do something and then the indicator will come back. We'll use that a lot. So F2 to make a delay with three seconds and then you can see this selection again with the yellow things here. So now we want to type something in here. That's fine. And what do we want to type in? We already copied that. So control V, paste it in. That's it. So now we have two lines. Let's try to run it again. So close down the notepad like this. We won't save it. We don't need it. Then we run the file. We open up a notepad. This is our very first robot. This is still our first robot. So far, so good. Then we click OK. So now we have a robot that can type something in. It can send keystrokes. It can open applications actually as well. And we have a message box, but we still miss something. Let's create the last steps in one sequence. So we have a delay of five seconds. Then we click file, new window, and we already have this message box. So go back to UiPath. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to have a delay and then we click file, new window. That's it. So right after this type into, we have our, we can rename that as well. So we can say type into our second line like this. Then we'll search for delay because now we want five seconds delay. A delay is something that we use a lot as well. Sometimes we wait for applications to load web pages or something, or simply just wait a few seconds to make sure that the system is stable. Here, we simply just drag it in again. Delay. You'll see that there's not something we can fill in like up here, but that's because it's up here in properties. That's the duration. The duration is filled in when we say hours. So we say zero, zero, that's zero hours. 
no quotation marks here because it's time. Then we say colon. We will then have to specify the minutes. It will still be zero minutes. Then we'll have five seconds. That's zero five. Let me repeat it. We don't need quotation marks because it's a time. We specify the hours, the minutes and the seconds like this. So this is five seconds. So now we have our delay. Then we want to click somewhere. To do that, you find a click like this and drag in the click like here. Then we'll indicate what we want to click on. So again, click, then we'll click file, right? And we can rename this. So here we click file. That's it. Now we just need to click the when when we have clicked file, we need to click the new window, right? So that is simply just another click. So drag it in. We need to indicate it. And now you can see we can really do something because when we click here, it will just be recognized as another file. We're not, uh, we don't need to click the file twice. That was not our mission. It was not stated in the process description. To uh, make sure that we fix this, we could of course also always delete this and drag in another click. But another cool way to do it is to click these three ribbons and then click indicate on screen. This will let you reselect it. And again, we won't repeat the mistake. And remember, we had one cool way to make sure that we could click this file without selecting it. That was the F2. So click F2, three seconds will go by, click the file, then wait. And when you see these yellow ones, we can now select the new window. Let me repeat that because this is important. So we need to reselect re this uh, click item. So we click these three ribbons, we click indicate on screen, then we'll click F2 like this. We'll click the file and then we'll wait three seconds. And now we can select it. That was the new window we want to select like this. So now we are done with our robot. Let me close down the notepad like this. Here we will just fix the description. We will say new window. Again, these descriptions, they are not mandatory. I'll recommend you to do it to get in a good habit of doing so because this is very important. So now we should be done. We can try to run it, but let's first inspect it. We open up a notepad. Then we type in a line of text. We type in a second line. We made a delay of five seconds. Then we click file. We click new window. And remember, we had this nice F2, so we could have a delay of three seconds. We use that here, and then we have our message box. Let's try to run the robot. So we click the drop down, and then we click run file. We open up notepad, we type it in. We have a delay of five seconds. We click the file, we click new window. We see that we open up a new notepad, and then the message box with the finished message came up. Congratulations, you built your first robot. You could follow a process description and you could actually do some very complicated things. Wasn't that easy? Click the video to the left to go to the plus two hour UiPath course. Or click the video to the right if you want to learn the UiPath Re framework, which is essential if you're going to build UiPath robots.